Less pleased Zeus, who had grown less cruel than in the days when he sent Prometheus to his terrible doom and made Pandora to be a plague to all mankind. He agreed to what Hermes suggested, and the two immortals began their wanderings in the land of Arcadia. Zeus disguised as an old man, and Hermes as his grandson. Now at that time, the king of Arcadia was Lycon, a fierce, savage man given to all manner of evil. He had fifty sons, and most of them were as bad as he was, and like him they were cannibals. Zeus and Hermes entered King Lycon's palace, and at first he refused to give them food, and even threatened to kill them. Hermes, so young and handsome, would make him an excellent feast. Perhaps it was this which made him change his mind. Certainly he bade Zeus sit down at his table. Perhaps he considered Hermes already a prisoner being fattened up for a future banquet. Suddenly Lycon realized that there was no fresh meat ready for that day, but this did not trouble him over much, since he had one son, Nectimus, who was not as wicked as the rest, and always refused to eat human flesh. On this day, he had dared to tell his father that to eat one of his guests was the wickedest thing a man could do. You're only fit for stewing, snarled Lycon, and so Nectimus was killed, jointed and put in the pot. When this hideous meal was placed on the table, Zeus, the all-seeing, knew at once what the dish was which was set before him. Filled with rage, he sprang to his feet, and a great light shone round him as Lycon cowered away, realizing in a moment of terror that his guest was none other than the king of the immortals. Wretch! cried Zeus. All that I have heard of you is true. You are not fit to be a man. Go forth 